Well, hello, everybody. This is your favorite speaker, Dr. Ronald J. Brown. And our topic for today is the 4th of July. And the subtitle, as you can see, is the Liturgy of American Independence. The 4th of July is a unique and complicated holiday in the United States as we see today the political divide between Republicans and Democrats, right and left, the various ethnic groups uh, as I'm speaking. In New York City, I mean, it's killings in the subway, school shootings, it is racism, it is ethnic division, religious hostility. And that's precisely what the 4th of July was to become, a symbol of the unity, that founding event which unites all Americans, irrespective of whether they are Native American or African American or white or German or Jewish or Catholic or Muslim or Chinese Americans. Holidays like the 4th of July it are aimed at uniting a particular people. So once again, this is our outline for today's lecture. The beginning of the United States, 13 colonies get their independence and basically compared to the ancient civilizations of the world, the United States was born with almost no history. And we began our search for a unique national history. Eventually, the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, became the focus of this new national identity. Well, it was rather slow in emerging as a major holiday, and it was in the great invention of national holidays during the Civil War by Abraham Lincoln that the 4th of July emerged as a national holiday. The 4th of July has played a major role in American holidays and in American history. Various rituals have emerged of what we do to celebrate this holiday. And then finally, point seven would be devoted to the influence of the 4th of July in world history. So, Let's get going on our exploration of the 4th of July. Well, the United States was born in 1776. Our history went back to 1620s and 30s. And compared to Chinese, we were a newcomer on the block. Ancient civilizations, ancient religions trace their history back thousands of years, the Jewish Passover going back thousands of years. So the United States, like any new identity, was a new one on the block. The Germans trace their history back to the great Teutoburg Forest victory over the Romans in the year AD 9. Christmas, going back over 2,000 years, founding event of Christianity, which inspired civilizations. You see Charlemagne, Charles the Great, um, who became a Christian emperor, just as the Tsar of Russia became Christian and grafted their new civilizations, whether it's the German civilization or whether it's the Russian civilization, grafted them onto an even more ancient history, which was Christianity. But the United States was confronted with this. So, I mean, to sit down to say, okay, we're independent now, we beat the British. So the last thing on their minds was, well, we need a national holiday. They were more interested in building an army and building a navy expanding into the Midwest and eventually across the continent, getting a stable currency. 
These were the problems facing our founding fathers, and many people refer to them as our flounding fathers. Well, in addition to holidays, there were many other things the new country had to confront. Uh, what kind of money are we going to have? What's it going to be called? Are we going to have a national anthem or not, such as the Marseilles in France or Deutschland über alles in Germany? Are we going to have a flag and what's going to be on this flag? Is it going to be a religious country like Israel and Iran and Saudi Arabia? Or is it going to be a secular country like France with just three colors? Well, of course, we're going to have to start putting up monuments, and we didn't have a, a glorious you know, Queen uh, Victoria. And what pictures are we going to put on our money once we invent a money? So all of these symbols of independence uh, were major decisions for the founding fathers. Well, holidays, in addition to symbols, were very important. Holidays emerge. Well, holidays are more than just fun. Sure, at Christmas we drink eggnog. At Easter we get, we rot our teeth with chocolate. Passover meal is food and wine conversation. Even the Queen's birthday is a major celebration and festivities. But in addition to the fun, well, every holiday has to have some fun or else nobody would celebrate it. But it is also history. Holy Week for Christians, beginning with Palm Sunday, Maudie Thursday, the institution of the Eucharist, Good Friday, the crucifixion of Jesus, Easter Vigil on Saturday, and finally the day of the resurrection on Sunday. Holy Week is a history book in rituals, festivals, and church services. The Passover meal. What's the question that a child asks to an older person? How is this night different from all other nights? And then they launch on the usual tried and true history of the Exodus. Holidays also are patriotic. Think of Memorial Day, Labor Day, Independence Day. These are times when people put up their flags. They celebrate national holidays, big parades down the street, celebrating major national events. In fact, as I am speaking to you today, Queen Elizabeth II of England is celebrating her 70th year as the Queen of England. A major event with all kinds of festivities. Well, of course, everybody in the bar is going to be dr buying drinks for everybody else and eating food. TV programs are going to commemorate the reign of Queen Elizabeth, the longest reigning monarch in human history, if I'm not mistaken, as well as signs of patriotism, military parades, bands, uniforms. So holidays are powerful. In fact, the founding fathers realized we need holidays. But of course, the question was, which holiday? Well, there were various um, candidates for major American holiday status. Of course, Christopher Columbus discovering America in 1492. Well, he was very important for the United States. Our future capital was going to be in the District of Columbia, Columbia University in New York, the Columbia River. So that was a good candidate, a European who drug North America kicking and streaming, screaming into European history and European domination. Well, another candidate was, of course, Thanksgiving. Well, this was a local holiday up in Massachusetts. 
but it was um, a candidate because it could have been um, decided by the founding fathers to make it into a major holiday and of national importance. Well, there were other possibilities. I mean, some good and some bad, the lynching of, um, slay of um, witches in New England sort of tarnished the holiday of Thanksgiving because these Puritans, who we like to think were so pure, had no problem lynching witches. Even Christopher Columbus, as we know today, many people said, well, what's, how are African-American slaves who were brought over? How are Native Americans going to view this character of Christopher Columbus. Now, at the time, I don't know whether our founding fathers considered these as negative, but of course, Thanksgiving was a local thing, and Columbus was a um, universal European and American, and he wasn't even American. He was Spanish. So still, the search went on. Each of the colonies had their own history. For example, in the upper left, we see the seal of New York City, established in 1624, incorporated by the Dutch the following year. Pennsylvania had its rich Quaker history. Maryland had its Catholic history. Virginia had its legends of Croatan and the last colony. Roger Williams, First Baptist Church in America in Rhode Island had its own unique history. The colonies of the South had their distinctive histories and their institutions such as slavery and uh, their own plantation, rural, agricultural culture. So each colony had its own history. And as uh, the 13 colonies and later a growing number started establishing more close ties to transportation and business, the founding fathers and the later um, leaders, presidents, Congress, senators, were still searching for a holiday which would be a uniting holiday for all of the colonies, which became states. Well, of course, the most popular colon, the holiday in many of the colonies was Christmas. Well, that was a uh, holiday celebrated by most Christians, whether they were Catholics or Lutherans, uh, uh, Episcopalians loved Christmas, the Moravians and from Germany, had their own tradition. But Christmas was also a divisive factor because the Calvinists, these would be the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, did not celebrate Christmas because the Bible didn't say when Jesus was born. It doesn't give a date. And so many Protestants said, well, December 25th was simply accepted because the Romans were celebrating their big holiday of Saturnalia on December 24th and 5th. And so the Christians just said, okay, well, we'll assign our holiday, the birth of Jesus, to that same date. Also, Christmas was controversial because, well, what are Jews going to do? Uh, even though they were very few in number, still, it would have been a divisive holiday. And finally, the Constitution that was written clearly separated church and state. So even if you look at one of the early Christmas cards, it is a secular scene of a watermill and a house and some holly, no crosses or Jesus pictures, but yet the name Christ Mass was a controversial uh, topic. And so Christmas really wasn't a good candidate. What about George Washington's birthday, day of inauguration, his death day? Well, we do have Washington holiday, President's Day, 
And that was a good candidate as our great hero. In fact, uh, the picture on the left in the circle is on the dome of the Capitol building. And on the right, you see a painting of the apothesis of George Washington, that he didn't actually die. He was taken up to heaven by angels, where he sits on a throne beside Jesus. So that was another candidate for a national holiday. Well, 4th of July started emerging as the prime contestant in this vicious competition for the greatest American holiday. Of course, it harkens back to Philadelphia and the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. But even the Declaration of Independence poses problems because the Declaration of Independence, unlike the Constitution, did not accept separation of church and state and religion and politics. The Declaration of Independence is a very religious document. Now, while it doesn't refer to God or to Jesus or Jehovah or Allah or the Buddha or any of the Hindu gods, it is still permeated with religion. And this remains a major problem with the 4th of July, if you take it seriously, is that many people today especially on the right and evangelical Christians, cite the Declaration of Independence to prove the Christian nature of the American Republic. And in fact, rejecting the separation of church and state, which is in the Constitution. Today, this is even more controversial because the evangelical Christians on the right, the major supporters of the Republican Party, and especially Donald Trump, firmly believe that the Declaration of Independence pronounced the United States as a Christian country. A whole plethora of books are being written about the religious Christian character of the United States. We see a couple of them here. America's Christian history, the untold story. Did America have a Christian beginning? Well, the Declaration of Independence clearly is a religious document. When in the course of human events, placing the Constitution in global world human history. We are given certain inalienable rights by our creator, meaning freedom, liberty, democracy, were not invented by the founding fathers or George Washington or the French Enlightenment, but they were given to us by the creator which of course is God. Declaration of Independence refers to the laws of nature and who created nature, but God. So our demand for life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, political independence does not come from the people, does not come from George Washington, but they come from God. Another term employed is the supreme judge of the world. God has declared that our quest for independence is in accordance with God's wishes. So, the so Fourth of July, which we celebrate today with fireworks and food and going to the beach, is a controversial holiday because of its deeply religious character. Well, in the early years of independence, the 4th of July was celebrated. And we see um, Theodore Wright, an oration spoken at Hartford in the state of Connecticut on the anniversary of American independence, 1798. 
an oration, a speech on the right 1802, another speech by Zephaniah Swift Moore up in Worcester, Connecticut. Once again, repeating the principles of the Declaration of Independence, America as a Christian-rooted country. Oh, to the 4th of July at New Dutch Church here in New York City by Walter Townsend, an ode preached in a church. So the early founding fathers clearly associated the 4th of July with religion. Ode on the anniversary of American independence in Boston, 1842. Hail, queen of dignity and ease, illustrious independence, thy smile ensures eternal peace. Thy ways are ways of liberty. At thy approach, oppression dies. The not tyrant bows his head. Bright Lucifer has lost the skies and mingles with the mighty dead. Here again, proclaiming American independence almost as a god itself, defeating Lucifer, the devil, bringing eternal peace, almost the apocalypse, the end of the world, the second coming of Jesus. On the anniversary of independence in the United States in Philadelphia, another poem, let the poets of Europe write odes on their king, compose their music, the birthday of freedom we ever will sing and rejoice on the 4th of July. So we don't have kings in Europe, but we have democracy. No proud, haughty monarch can here bear the sway. Since tyranny now we defy, their liberty ushers this joyous glad day and proclaims tis the 4th of July. Almost apocalyptic, almost religious terminology, deeply rooted in the 4th of July and the document of independence itself. Well, this was not unusual for the early Americans to view the United States as a religious sacred creation. Many people refer to this as the founding myth of the United States, that it was created with a religious sacred mission. Of course, the Declaration of Independence is filled with God talk and religion. The Bill of Rights, once again, elaborates on the inalienable rights given to us by God, expanded into fundamental human rights, not by any government or king or dictator, but given to us by God. Even the freedom of press and religion in the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights once again enshrines the autonomy of religion. The myth of American exceptionalism. We are different from other countries because we were founded by God. As an Eisenhower put in, God, we trust on our currency. He added one nation under God to the Pledge of Allegiance. And presidents until today have launched wars around the world to spread the American way of life. So this is deeply rooted in American culture and identity. Well, the search for a national holiday sort of got bogged down in controversy. Many people said that the Declaration of Independence was too religiously tinged to serve as a national holiday. George Washington's birthday or death day or inauguration were somewhat celebrated, but never on a national level. Each state retained a lot of its independence, 
as we had the Articles of Confederation and then rejected them, then wrote a new constitution. Still, Americans before the age of the railroad were very isolated. Every state had its own National Guard, its own army. Many of the states had their own money. Many of the states even went to war against each other, fighting over borders. Well, this period of indecision lasted until the Civil War, the most bloody war fought by the United States. If we look at the chart at the top, we see 620,000 people estimated died in the Civil War. Only 400,000 in World War II, a little over 100,000 in World War I, and the other wars going down in smaller and smaller numbers. So the Civil War, <clears throat> the war that almost destroyed the United States, emerged as the first great crisis facing the country. This was not a foreign war. It was a war of one chunk of the United States against another chunk. Well, during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln became convinced that finally, once and for all, we have to start establishing national holidays. And these holidays must serve the purpose of healing the wounds of the Civil War. So in the middle of the Civil War, October 3rd, 1860, he pronounced that Thanksgiving would be the first American national holiday. This rather obscure New England uh, Boston holiday was raised to the status of a national holiday. Now, he established it in his declaration, the last Thursday of November. Today, it is the fourth Thursday, but then it was the last Thursday. And its goal was to unite the North and the South. And he clearly said, we have victims on both sides of the war. And he said that this holiday should be a day of turning our attention to those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in this lamentable civil strife. And he called upon Almighty God, the imposition of the Almighty Hand, to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it. So once again, this is a religious holiday. It talks about divine purpose. Divine purpose, God's plan for the United States. So we had our first national holiday. And... People like Thomas Nast, the illustrator, 1869, popularized the holiday, which only reluctantly was accepted by Americans. Most people say, what does that have to do with us? That is Boston Puritan stuff. Well, Thomas Nast, a German immigrant, um, uh, drew this, um, and it was widely publicized. Sam, Uncle Sam's Thanksgiving dinner. If you look closely, uh, you see a big tale of a Chinese person, or Chinese family with a little kid sitting in his high chair with his mother beside him. Beside, on the left-hand side, you see an African-American family. You see on the right hand, a Spanish woman with her a veil and, and the pictures in the wall behind it. You see George Washington, Abraham Lincoln and President Grant. And on the right up in the corner, you see the Castle Garden in New York City with that domed building, which was the precursor to Ellis Island Immigration Center. It also brought not only the Africans of the America, but if you look right, almost right in the middle of the picture, you see a Native American, which was rather um, exceptional uh, at that time. 
in the post-Civil War years, the Native Americans were not even recognized as citizens. They were being relegated to the uh, reservations in the far West. So Thanksgiving started becoming a popularly celebrated holiday. Well, in 1870, it was Ulysses S. Grant who expanded the growing roster of holidays. He was the one who declared New Year's, Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, and Christmas as unpaid federal holidays. Now, when Thanksgiving was first declared, um, it was a holiday, but it only became unpaid federal holiday. And later, each of these holidays gradually became paid federal holidays. States adopted them as state holidays. Post offices started closing, banks started closing, and the holidays grew in importance. But in June 28, 1870, Civil War is over, and Thanksgiving and Fourth of July, New Year's, and Christmas become national but unpaid federal holidays. Gradually, with the Fourth of July becoming a holiday, Independence Hall in Philadelphia grew in importance as a tourist destination. And we see Federal Independence Hall uh, in Philadelphia with its horses and carriages. People started going to Philadelphia and uh, Philadelphia adopted this new Fourth of July holiday as its own and started organizing exhibits, restoring Independence Hall, which was falling into disrepair. In Washington, as the new city on the Potomac was being built, eventually the National Archives building was built. And if you look at the picture on the left, I mean, it could be a synagogue, it could be a church. In the front is the altar, which you see on the right, deeply embedded in glass and protected is a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And when you visit this National Archive, almost church chapel-like setting, people immediately lower their voice. Mothers tell their kids to be quiet. The men take off their hats because it is almost a religious uh, site. And in fact, it is. Remember, the Declaration of Independence is filled with God talk and God references. However, African Americans did not celebrate the 4th of July. They never accepted it because it did not give freedom. It did not give any rights to the African-American slaves. Even just before the Civil War, Frederick Douglass says, what, is the, what to the slave is the 4th of July? For African-American slaves, the 4th of July belongs to white people. It guaranteed the gross injustice and cruelty to which the slave is the constant victim. And so African Americans put an armband on, black armband. They held funeral services in their churches, the AME Zion, the AME Church, various Baptist and Methodist and Presbyterian churches. It was a day of sadness because the Declaration of Independence was not applied to African slaves until after the Civil War. Same thing with Native Americans. What did the Declaration of Independence bring? It brought the genocide of the Indians. Until today, many Indians do not celebrate Happy Fourth of July. They burn the American flag for the genocide of 
the Native Americans. But gradually, the 4th of July became a symbol. Even long before it became a national holiday, the date itself became symbolic. The groundbreaking for the massive Erie Canal was on July 4th, 1817, going from Albany and the Hudson River across to Lake Erie and its attached canals, turning upstate New York into an area filled with cities from Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, Schenectady, Binghamton, down to Albany. The final abolition of slavery in New York State was July 4th, 1827. This was gradual abolition over two decades with the last New York State slave achieving their independence on July 4th, 1827. In the early years of the Republic, it was very patriotic to die on the 4th of July. Thomas Jefferson, Adams, James Monroe, all died on the 4th of July. It was a very popular uh, display of patriotism to die on the 4th of July. The Louisiana Purchase, July 4th, 1803, almost doubled the size of the United States. Texas Annexation, July 4th, 1845. The Ku Klux Klan, July 4th, 1924, massive marches in major cities. Once again, patriotic American acts on the 4th of July. July. The Washington Monument, July 4th, 1848. Union Square Statue of George Washington, July 4th, 1856. Dedication of the Statue of Liberty. Well, it was planned for July 4th, 1876, the 100th anniversary of the United States, but it was delayed because of construction problems until October 28, 1886. But still, Edouard Laboulier designed it to be reve revealed and celebrated on July 4th, 1876. The Monument to Columbus, July 4th, 1907 in Columbus Square in New York, World Trade Center, announcing the return of the United States of New York City as the Empire City, July 4th, 2004. First space shuttle launch, July 4th, 2006. Once again, doing something on the 4th of July was not just accidental. It was intentional to link these great events in American history with the greatest of all events in American history, the Declaration of Independence. Well, gradually, 4th of July grew as a national holiday. Congress declared it a paid federal holiday. FDR signed it into um, act. And it was the beginning of the institutionalization of the holiday as a paid federal holiday. It was declared a national holiday, meaning post offices were closed, banks were closed in 1938 by FDR. And so gradually it was emerging across the country as the premier expression of American nationalism. Well, like any holiday, 
you have to attach all kinds of rituals. Holidays have to be fun, they have to be festive, they have to teach history. And so they call holiday of 4th of July, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, uh, Labor Day, Memorial Day, has attracted a lot of rituals. Of course, fireworks is the main ritual. In fact, in New York, they the have giant barges filled with fireworks displays that sail out into the Hudson River and the bay and illuminate the nighttime sky. On the right, firecrackers. As you can see, they're all made in China today, as are fireworks. But these are part of the holiday. Now, what is the symbolism of fireworks, explosions in the sky, and firecrackers, explosions in a smaller um, scale? Well, fireworks, like the ringing of bells, were believed to chase away evil spirits, that devils and ghosts and the evil spirits did not like loud noises, clapping your hands, ringing of bells, explosions are traditionally ways of getting rid of evil, banishing evil banishing ghosts and spirits and devils. And so, as we celebrate the 4th of July, we are banishing monarchs and dictators and celebrating the arrival of what the, what the Declaration of Independence proclaimed, a new age of freedom. Fireworks are horrendously expensive. Millions of dollars are spent every year. And of course, every year it has to be bigger, better, more elaborate. Nathan's Aldon, the Coney Island, inaugurated its first 4th of July celebration in 1916. And until today, Nathan's hot dogs are a treat for the 4th of July. In fact, the, uh, the hot dog eating contest, which I think is rather vulgar, but still it is part of the Coney Island 4th of July celebration along with fireworks. Nathan's also gives out little coupons, just like they did back in 1916, where if you get one, you can get a hot dog for five cents. I got one of the little coupons once, but I didn't want to use it because I thought it was such a historic little piece of paper that I kept it and I paid my regular fee for hot dogs. Then I noticed that Nathan's also sells great frog legs, so I got those. Macy's sponsors the fireworks in New York. I think they still do, beginning in July 4th, 1976. And it said, you see the poster uh, returning to the pyrotechnic extravaganza. Here again, um, holiday celebrations of the 4th of July are celebrated by businesses, by uh, governments. Remember the story of my great grandfather who owned coal mines in Pennsylvania. He also always sponsored a big lavish. Fourth of July celebration for his predominantly Eastern European immigrant coal miners. And he always manned the ice cream stand, giving out free ice cream cones to the children of all of, and probably the adults of all of his Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian, Polish, Czechoslovak um, immigrant workers who made him a millionaire. Picnics have been a part of the 4th of July celebration from the beginning. 4th of July is not celebrated in churches. It is an outdoor 
barbecue picnic type celebration. When I lived in Moscow, I would always go to the American embassy before the 4th of July, and they would always give little gifts to Americans, but we would always hook up with each other and say, oh, who's having a big celebration for the 4th of July? And I'd say, oh, I'm just teaching here. On, um, I live in the dorms at the university. And I'd always get an invitation to go to somebody's barbecue in the backyard. Little cakes made with the American flag, all kinds of goodies. But once again, outdoor picnics. And here you see the picnic on the left, probably Central Park somewhere. Back in the 1800s, women dressed uh, up to the neck and to the uh, down to the ends of their sleeves, but surrounded by American flags. Symbols of independence. The Liberty Bell in Philadelphia is recreated and is actually rung on the 4th of July. And many cities have copies of the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia in their parks and city halls. And you can still buy them, especially in Philadelphia. To buy one from Philadelphia and take it home with you is a great souvenir. The Declaration of Independence also has spawned the whole um, cult of signing documents. So when you say, give me your John Hancock, that is taken from the Declaration of Independence. Because the signers of the Declaration of Independence were not sure whether this revolution business was going to succeed or not. And they knew well that if the revolution was defeated by the British, and the British came back and took over again, everyone who signed the Declaration of Independence would be rounded up and would be shot. Greeting cards became a very popular um, item, not so much anymore. But here again, you see the kid with fireworks, the American Eagle, the flag, the um, uh, sparklers dressed in his little sailor suit. On the right again, you see the American Eagle, the American flags and Lady Liberty with 4th of July greetings, Liberty forever. In the age of the internet, nobody sends cards anymore. But if you do go online, you can find that there are available 4th of July greeting cards, which you can email, although that's not too popular anymore. All rituals are being collected in the 4th of July encyclopedia, which features especially music. Um, works composed by great composers for the occasion of the 4th of July. John Philip Sousa, marches, um, government sponsors, uh, choral contests, uh, putting old bits of music to new form to celebrate the holiday. Movies. Born on the 4th of July with Tom Cruise, Independence Day. Here again, associating major events of today with the first Independence Day. Love the poster on the left. You see the aliens arriving, attacking the White House once again on the 4th of July. Well, even if you don't go on a picnic or you don't get on top of a tall building to watch fireworks, Fourth uh, of July sales have become very popular, like they are for the after Christmas sales, the before Christmas sales, uh, the beginning of uh, the Christmas season on Black Friday, uh, even the early sales Thursday evening after the Thanksgiving parade. 
business realizes businesses realize that any holiday is a good chance to make money, whether it is food, whether it is dinners, whether it is clothing sales, the malls are open and eager to take your money. Now, the 4th of July in world history. 1776 was the American Declaration of Independence, the beginning of the American Revolution. The next revolution, which patterned itself after the American Revolution, was in 1791 with uh, uh, Toussaint Louverture declaring the independence of Haiti from France, a slave revolt, the very first one which succeeded. The French Revolution cited the American Declaration of Independence when they declared the overthrow of the kings and the abolition of the aristocracy and the Catholic Church and declared freedom for the French. They, both of these revolutions, cited the American Declaration of Independence as their inspiring document. The many Latin American revolutions of the 1830s from Mexico down to Argentina and Brazil and everything in between cited the role of the importance of the document of the American Declaration of Independence. 1848, year of revolutions from Russia, from Russia to Portugal, Spain, Germany, once again, citing the example of the American Revolution. The Russian Revolution, Karl Marx was a great scholar of the American Declaration of Independence. Chinese Revolution of 1949, once again, this long tradition of popular revolutions against kings and monarchs, which began with the American Revolution. Revolution in Cuba, the revolutions in Africa and Asia against the British, French, Spanish, um, Portuguese colonial era. 1960s, a country's declaring independence, writing constitutions, electing presidents. This was a part of this ongoing wave of revolutions. Well, the American Revolution really started something serious. But like every holiday, the 4th of July holiday remains controversial. The American Declaration of Independence is a deeply religious document referring to God in many ways, in many shapes, in many forms, declaring that our right to independence is a God-given right that the God of the universe has guaranteed this, and that our human rights and freedoms do not come from some king or some emperor or some resolution in Congress, but these rights come from God. And that influences American society until today. So when Congress abolished slavery, and Abraham Lincoln released his Emancipation Proclamation. This was not Abraham Lincoln and Congress giving any rights to the African Americans. It was Congress and the president recognizing that African Americans had these rights forever and that the Southern states had denied them these rights. Same thing today with women's rights, and gay rights, and all the other rights of uh, oppressed minorities. Uh, 
are not, they are not thanking Congress and presidents and governors and mayors for giving them these rights. These rights come, according to the Declaration of Independence, from God. And we are simply reclaiming our rights which had been denied us. Now, this far, the Declaration of Independence has had a powerful influence. But today, a new trend is emerging, and that is, is America, because of the Declaration of Independence, a fundamentally religious country? And not only is it religious, but is it Christian? And here we see a collection of essays uh, on perspectives on our religious heritage. And look at a map of the United States with the stripes, but the stars replaced by the Christian cross. The evangelical Christians today, major supporters beginning with Ronald Reagan through George W. Bush, and especially with Donald Trump, attempting to make the United States a Christian country. Think of the picture of Donald Trump standing in front of the Episcopal Church near the White House, holding up a Bible. And we see this with the abortion battle, gay rights, controversies, women's rights. Should there be prayer in the schools again? Some people arguing that the, in God we trust on our currency and one nation under God in our uh, Pledge of Allegiance should be removed. Other people say it should remain and the United States should reaffirm its Christian identity. We see this with Donald Trump's so-called Muslim ban. Make America Christian again. You can't understand Donald Trump without understanding what is going on in America today, which alarms him. The mass migration of non-Christians, of Jews, of Muslims, of Hindus. Don't forget, Donald Trump grew up in Queens, where I live. When he grew up, Queens was all white. Following 1965 and the Heart Cellar Immigration Reform Act, Queens has become the most culturally, racially, and religiously diverse area in the world. Mosques, synagogues, Buddhist temples, Hindu temples, Sikh houses of worship. Every street corner has five or six different houses of worship. And so this whole notion of is America a Christian country, as many on the Republican right insist, or is it a secular country as the Constitution insists with its freedom of religion, separation of church and state? So these are controversies which are still alive very much. And the holiday of the 4th of July is at the center of this. It is celebrating with fireworks and food and parades and everything else. It is celebrating the Christian origins, or at least the religious origins, of American identity, American exceptionalism. Our notion of the United States being a unique country with the right to invade other countries, to protect God-given rights of people, to protect uh, individuals from persecution around the world. So the holiday of the 4th of July has profoundly influenced American history, and it is still a very controversial topic until today. So this is Dr. Ronald Brown, 
who can be contacted at ronbrownmedia at gmail.com if you would like. Always enjoy feedback from people who watch these um, videos. And I hope to see you sometime in the future when you will be asked to discover another chapter, very often an unknown chapter in American history. So thank you very much again and enjoy your next 4th of July picnic. So thank you, signing off, bye-bye.